Hello everyone, my name is Notepad Anon, and it is 11.55 p.m. It's five minutes to midnight, and I said I was going to stream today, trying to translate uh, Human Resonance Kiz Night, or, you know, Human Resonance RPG Kiz Night. Kit or Kizanite, depending on the depending on if which translation service you use. But yeah. I said I was going to, so here I am. You may be saying, Notepad, it's very late at night. You should be going to things like sleep. And I say and I counter that by saying, Well, y'all shouldn't have been talking to me about one D and D all day. That, that shit dropped and it's been Quote nicely, uh whack. Uh, yeah, so, today, why are you open? Away. So yeah, today, we are going to be working on Kiz Night, as you can kind of see. Last time, we actually got quite a bit done. A lot of the rule part done, about 100 pages, roughly. No, about 100 pages in, we're at page 111 at this point, so we have the free scenes and things like that. What we need to do today, however, is... Combat rules, yes, this is actually going to be the big one, but it's actually surprisingly not that big of a section for what you... For what you've been told it is. It's like, yeah, combat. It's like, this is going to be a really detailed section, and it's really not. Uh, I actually had to double-check this quite a few times. Because here's the rule part, because this is the exploration phase. This is the search rules. If we go here, the exploration rules. We go down here. This is the combat rules, like a battle battle rule, depending on which one you decide to do. And then after this, we have the Utama or or the Spirit Decor. Which looking at this, like this is really small. Like this is a really small section. Like what's this even what's this even talking about? Binding has been shredded and have been disconnected. Use the last strength to reconnect their bonding thread. Like, yeah, I think this is like a, this is the savior mechanic in case you fuck up. Like, yeah. Yeah, like there, there's this kind of like. I believe this the, the, like, this entire section is in fact just the savior mechanic. Like it's not strictly just a, oh, you you, you made a boo boo and no, it's just like you. That's like the you fucked up the combat. Do you want a? Do you want a retry? And it's like oh oh shit. All right, cool. Pog, as they say, you know, Pogarino. Uh, let me see if I can get back to the right section. So we got to do this. This is the combat section. It's going to see here. Check and heading to. So we need to go here. We need to hit. We need to hit this button. We need to set you to heading to. Control C, Control V. And next we're going to call this the. I think battle rules would probably be most accurate. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, late night Dewongs. Uh, no, had spent six hours looking at D and D one drama. No, not D and D one. It's one D and D. Yeah, the, yeah, I remember that. It's one D and D. Because uh, I, I have a, I have a few theories on what's going on. Like I think, no. <laughs> yeah, it's um I've talked about this before. Ah uh, yeah, I I've talked about it a few times, but I believe that's going to be the convergence point. It sounds like a really pretentious term and it is, but that's going to be the point in time in which people have to make a decision of like do we tolerate this shit or not? And like uh, if if it if they are rewarded for it, here's the thing: if they are rewarded for it, it is as they say, Jover. Uh, we we're just uh, let's see, battle between twin trolls, rule of combat. This page we explain the rules and flow of battle. PC. 
Yeah, because what's going to happen is that if it is rewarded, here's the thing. If it is rewarded, and people buy it, and people buy all the minis, and people do all the shit they're proposing, because there's some, like, weird things that they're proposing. That, like, I have no idea why everyone's like, man, this is really cool. I have literally zero fucking idea why people are like, this is cool. And there are people doing that. It's like, are you high? Are you stupid? Do you need, do you need mental help? Like, are you legitimately fucking stupid? Because, like, one of the big things about what they've, what they've kind of proposed. Hello, phone. Is that there's going to be a separation in digital, you know, in digital goods. And, like, the one thing about that, like, the way that they were kind of making it out to be. Now, this is a complete fucking derail, and I didn't want to do... I, I wanted the stream late at night to not derail, but it was going to come up anyway. Is that... For, like, one D&D, what they want you to do... Is... They, they want you to buy the digital version, you know, for the, you know, the VTT stuff. And that's going to be apparently separate from the book, ver like the actual book version. Which, this tells me two things. Like, here's the thing. This is telling me two things. You're going to, like, the digital version will always be the better version. Because it's easier to put out in there. And... Because, and it's also kind of important, you know, it's kind of giving me a few different impressions. One of them being, the big thing with, like, digital books. Like, if I ever do release most of my books, everything is going to be mostly digital, not physical, simply because, A, it's easier that way. And B, and this is the important part, uh, you could update them. That's a big thing. You can update them. That has been, like, a very important thing when it comes to modern design is the fact that like you can update games now if you notice a typo you can go into the book change it and upload the new version as a pdf in like 10 seconds it's great i have a strange feeling the goal with one D, &D is to kind of move toward that kind of like you know digital storefront kind of concept because they because like the thing is like wizards owns you know D, D you know D, D beyond they own that which is already kind of nutty and they want you to subscribe to D, &D beyond because that's where all the books are that's where all the things is yeah it's if they release the, the game as a service which is kind of a weird mo move to like i'd say there's three there's three interpretations yeah, crit fails on skill checks. Crits, the way that it's made out to be, from what people have been saying and what I've kind of seen around, is that nat 20s and nat fails are now in the game. If you roll a 20, it's an auto success. If you roll a 1, it is an auto failure. That is rules is written now. Because that's how, that's how people play the game. Yeah. If we go into the uh, concept that one D and D is ga game as a you know game as service, this is not good. <laughs> this sucks. However, when I say the convergence, you know, when I say you know the convergence point, what I'm meaning is that there's going to be a point where people, yes, people are going to make a choice because we saw this in the late 19, we saw these in the late 90s, and er, and late in the late 2000s. Because what happened in the late 90s? Well, I'll give you a hint. Nothing was happening. D&D 2nd Edition was really showing its age at that point. And the kind of the, the game on top of the world wasn't D&D really. It was things like Vampire. Games like Shadowrun. There was actually, there was a good competition in the market at that point. A really damn good competition. And that kind of led to 3.5, 3rd Edition. Which would lead to the D20 system, uh, which uh, had its own issues, bear, bear in mind. Which it's, the, the then we in the late 2000s, we had 4th edition. 4th edition was a complete departure from the rest of what people said D&D &D was D&D. &D. 
But here's always the here's always the funny thing with fourth edition. This is always the funny thing with fourth. Fourth edition is the summation of what literally every single person wanted. And that is what people wanted, ultimately speaking. Because if you would go on forums throughout the 2000s and stuff, people wouldn't talk about their cool adventures they had in D&D. They would talk about their builds. They would talk about the, their, their builds in 3.5. They would tell you how to do this. They would tell you how to do this. They'd show you how to do the most damage. They'd show you that you have to do this because of ivory tower design. For those who don't know, ivory tower design is effectively a system in which rewards you for knowing the system. Pretty much there were bait op there were good options and there were wrong op there were there were right options and wrong options inside of the game. And people wanted to do that and they optimized around it because life finds a way. <laughs> you know, 4E was gonna have cool I don't even think the virtual tools were gonna be like, oh, this is what 4E. I think the problem with 4E is that it was a game that everybody wanted, but nobody wanted to admit they wanted. Because they didn't really market it very well. It didn't literally look very good. All I'm saying, here's this this is my thing. If you were to bring out, you know, if they brought out 4E as this is Dungeons Dragons Strike. This is a this is a this is a side edition. Hey, you know, you want to get your you want to get your Zoomer fucking kid, you want to get your fucking stupid Zoomer kids into D&D. Here's this. Hey, you want to play a simpler version of D&D that's focused entirely on combat? Here it is. It's all on the grid. It's all this, all that. I think it would have done a lot better. But it was 4th edition. There's a reason 4th edition is kind of maligned. But... Yeah, it, this is also the thing with 4E. This is also the very big thing. People liked 4E. Because what eventually happened was we have an entire subgenre of games that are things like 4E. And then it, 4E didn't do too well. Then 5th edition came out. 5th edition has been with us for 80 years now. Eight fucking years. Which is kind of this weird moment when you think about it for longer than five seconds. Which this is technically one of the longest editions of D&D we've had of D&D. Even 3rd edition didn't really last as long as this. And 3rd edition lasted quite a while. I think one of the issues... This is one of the big things with 5th edition. People are like, well, it's 5th edition. This is the issue with 5th edition. Is, think back 10 years ago. 2012. Beautiful time, isn't it? What was out of there? Not much. Because I think one of the things is that in the past 10 years, things have changed drastically, monumentally. Because 10 years ago, you had Justin TV. Yeah, anyone remember Justin TV? Twitch wasn't really as big as it was. Streaming was still kind of there. You still had some of the weird, you like YouTube was finally ending some of its weirder rules regarding time limits. You had a lot of the tech. Computers were getting better. People were kind of doing it. There were no VTTs back then. You got to remember that. Like, if you wanted to play online then, you had to set up a Skype call for it. Things like Discord weren't around yet. Like, it's you had to have a Skype call. You had to have things like that. Which is weird if you think about it. You, you kind of close your eyes and like, wait a second. Even things like what we kind of take for granted, being like large files and things like that were harder to get by. But now, Apocalypse World and Burning Wheel were popular. Yeah, fucking Burning Wheel and Apocalypse World. Not PBTA, mind you. Apocalypse World. You gotta remember that. Because that was right during the end of the Forge era. That was when a lot of the indie guys kind of started going their own way. And we were kind of seeing the uh, the consequences of such. Because what happened in these two situations was the exact same thing. It happened twice. In the late 90s, no one, no one, no one could really capitalize off D&D's misstep. 
Some did, some tried, but then White Wolf kind of didn't know what what happened with its surge of popularity because it was a trendy game. That was the issue, and the issue with trends is that trends change. So they started appealing to the guys who bought D and D books, and that didn't work. And that kind of alienated audiences, and no one really knew what was going on. And then White Wolf was going through severe financial problems. But you got to remember, TSR was going through fi- severe you know, financial problems at this point, and that's the reason why they got bought by Wizards, which would be later bought by Hasbro. In the late 2000s, the, you want to know the game that occurred, what, what surged in fucking popularity then? It wasn't any other unique system. It wasn't games that were like really trying to do something new. It was path, things like Pathfinder. It was D20 games. People had this weird nostalgia for third edition, the third edition era. No one capitalized off of it really. So you know, instead of the instead of the big dra- instead of the big man on campus getting brought low, it didn't happen. Because you can make a strong argument. I would make a strong argument. Games like Apocalypse World, games like Burning Wheel. Well, I wouldn't say Burning Wheel as much, but Apocalypse World does have this, and a lot of the Forge games as well which are more a rejection of D&D-isms. We don't like D&D, therefore, here's the changes we made, rather than going in out of their way to make something um, unique. Rather than say, I want to make something. Why does, why does Apocalypse World have playbooks? Answer me that. Why does it have playbooks? Well, they want to tell us a very certain story with a very certain set of characters. No. They wanted, they wanted to do that because he wanted classes. He wanted classes, he didn't know how to put them in, and he wanted to make a point about having classes that are you know, separate and unique. So he put them in. Well, you know, it's one of those things where it became a, you are attempting to be something like D&D, that fill the, fill the hole, or you are trying to reject everything so much that you kind of become so polar opposite of it. Which is an unfortunate thing. And I believe that's a very unfortunate part of the of the song and dance. Because what's gonna happen in twenty twenty four is we're gonna I think we're gonna have another convergence point. We're gonna have a to- time where two things happen. I, I would say three things happen, but two two major things. Option A Option A, they get away with it. What they mean, what I mean by this is they succeed. Congratulations. They are, they, you know, people reward them for it. Wow, look at here, everybody. It's just like my fifth edition. Oh my god, everything is backwards compatible. And oh my god, it's so amazing. Oh my god, I want to buy the new player's handbook. I want to buy the new dungeon master guy. I want to buy the new monster manuals. So what if all my old stuff doesn't mean anything anymore? Yeah, I love consuming. It's so much fun. You know, sh- you know sh- stop talking and just consume the next pro- product and get excited for the next product. And if this happens, D&D wins because we're never going to break away from it. It will be it will be the top dog and everything else will be a secondary factor in the Western market at least. Everything is going to be the second factor to D D. Which this Yeah, it's that that'll be it. Because they the thing is if you really pay attention to what they're saying, they're not calling it sixth edition. They're not calling it anything like that. It's going to be like people are like the way they are, they're trying to make it out and the way they kind of word things. And what's going how they're wording things is like, hey, you already like 5e, here's 5e again, but shinier and newer and specialer by new 5e. And this is the thing, like, if they're rewarded for it, it's going to be fine. Like, this is, the, this, is the, this is the bad case scenario, this is option A. And what the thing is, is also, is that it's, if people really do buy onto it, other companies will as well. We're, we've already kind of seen moves toward that with, like, creator clubs and things like that. 
and even like the SRD phenomenon, they want you to, you know, buy into them, buy into the service, buy into the, the lifestyle, you could say, of a certain game or idea, which leads to option B. They don't. <laughs> Now, option B is we're going to see two th like 2008 fucking 4E 3.5 Flame Wars again. We will see blood on the risers. We will see war. Like, we're, we, it, this is going to be the big thing. This is, option B is the good moment because this is going to be a fracture. This is going to be one of those big convergence points. D&D &D will be brought low, if only for a moment. Because what's going to happen is the guys who like 5e are going to stick with 5e, and they're going to be like, I don't want to buy all the new books, and you shouldn't either. And then we're going to get a spinoff of games that are just going to be 5e inspired. I can't believe it's not 5e. Then, option, then you're going to have the people who adopt the new game, and the new game people are going to want to do their thing, and it's... It's going to be a fracture in the community. And no one's going to buy anything anymore. Because they're not going to support 5e proper. They're going to only support 5.5 edition. And this is arguably the best case scenario. Because it's going to get split the community. It's going to be a flame war. It's going to be cold. It's going to be edition wars all over again. It'll be the fucking Boltarian Jihad though. It is going to be a bunch of fucking stupid Zoomers on goddamn Twitter yelling at each other over the stupidest, most inane shit. Hell, that's like a big thing going on right now about modding. Apparently people are mad that you shouldn't mod games because modding is uh, uh, fucking with people's intellectual property. It's like, shut the fuck up. Holy shit. Like, who the... F like? Who the fuck is like, modding is bad, you shouldn't do it. Like, yeah, okay, you fucking PS3 gamer. Cool, fuck you, go away. I think that's what's going to... It's going to be a shit show, and D&D &D will be just maligned. Well, yeah, that's like... Like, one of the big things, like, what they kind of made was that, like, oh, it's the great... It's, because the thing is, they don't market D&D as the greatest fantasy role-playing game. It's the world's greatest role-playing game. That's what they market it as. It's the world's greatest. And the way they kind of speak about it in 5... In, I'm going to call it 5.5 because that's what it is so far. Because od and is not this. But the way they've been kind of speaking about it is making it to be... more friendly to things like that if that makes sense being like oh well we're going to give you more tools we're going to give you more of this <laughs> i genuinely don't know if it's going to work that's why i say it's you have a b my my option c is yeah that's what my uh my friend law actually pointed out Wait, all he did was to enable the Middle Eastern localized files? That's hilarious. That is hysterical. Yeah, people people never like to talk about that. People never like to talk about that. Yeah, you know, it's the world's greatest role playing. It's the world's greatest role playing game. I will always say this though. I will, I will always say this very, uh, very controversial stance about the nature of uh, my, my personal beliefs on the nature of, uh, you know, D and D. And people don't like it when I say this. People get, people get like mad at me when I, when I, when I say this. Being less like, you're, you're, you're betraying us. You're. You, you're not supposed to do this. You're supposed to be a good indie dev. But like, um, here's the here's the here's the nasty bit. Here's the nasty bit of information nobody wants you to hear. Um, D and D is fine. Like D and D as a as a game is perfectly fine. 
Now, let, let, you may be wondering, no, Pat, are you going to unpack that statement a little bit? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. Let me a second. <laughs> okay, we're going with here in spirit, right? Now, when I say D&D is fine, it does its job for being a fantasy adventure game that does fantasy adventures. If you try to... If you try to really make that game do anything other than, like, it's very particular a thing of going into a dungeon to stab goblins to steal their money, it doesn't work. It's terrible. But if you want to make a game about going into a dungeon to stab a bunch of goblins to death to steal their money, then yeah, it's fine. It's a fine game. I've had fun with 5e. Like, that's that's like the thing people get really annoyed with me about being like, yeah, it's fine. It does its job. Like, what more do you want a game to really do? And being like, yeah, there's a bunch of fucking spot rules. Everything is there for exactly what people want. But it's a game about going into a dark cave and stabbing a bunch of goblins for their money. If you think D&D &D is anything other than a, a game about going into a dungeon to stab a bunch of goblins for their money, you're not doing it right. That was actually kind of the interesting thing I noticed with uh, you, Wuso, actually. When they post, like, oh, saviors of the multiverse, you know, fifth level, I'm like, it's not, it's not quite how it works. Like, see, I've always... Like, if I were to ever write my, my own D&D, which I have a name, by the way, for it, it's going to be Zombies and Ziggurats, Z and Z, because that's a great fucking name. And it's... It's literally going to be, you have ten levels. There's nothing more, because most people are not going to get to level... No, what was the last time you heard of a group getting to, like, level 20... That's not like, we level up every other session, or we've been playing for six years, or some stupid shit like that. Like, it's, leveling up past, like, six is such a rarity. They made a chart, I remember they made a chart about this a few years ago, being like, most games do not progress past level, like, five. Like, there is a distinct cutoff of games that end at, like, level six, and it gets into, like, the single digits. And like point percentages. Like it was getting to like the point percentages tier of like you have like of people getting in into like tenth level. And now you could say like, oh well that's just people who reported, but it's like, yeah, that's people who reported, which is like the fact that like that few people even bother to even get that much on the world's greatest role playing game, it's like that's kind of fascinating to me. Uh, let's see, let me double check, and Kiznaip inserts a role play that increases the resonance of two souls before a battle begins. I move one square at each, this is called a human spirit resonance. It can be formed one time in one scenario, please consult the P with the player to decide the direction of the human spirit resonance. If you are worried, please refer to the following human spirit resonance production decision table. God, God bless you, brother. Human... It does not matter to decide by choosing a favorite item. It does not matter to random dice. Of course, you can think of original production. Uh, do I want to put this? Yeah, I guess. You zoonite. Oh, this is literally like. No, wait, I forgot. They don't like the. Wonder, are you gonna. Hold on. Actually, let me do. Uh, let me correct this real fast. We need to do this. 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 Each of the soul reaches out towards the other soul. Soul. I don't think you understand. This game has got so. Oh. 
Yeah, having a level cap does. Yeah, that's why I say like at level ten because like I, if I if I were to cite anything, four E did have an interesting idea of being like, hey, you've hit the end of like it's. I believe it went from like heroic, champion, and then paragon tier. I believe that was it. I can't remember the top of my head, but like you could hit the end of the heroic tree. It's like yeah, okay, we we're yeah we're hometown heroes. That's that's perfectly fine. That's a perfectly you know fine scale. But it's like oh we've upgraded to champions of the realm, or hey we're upgraded to paragons of the the world or kind of thing. Like that's kind of an interesting idea, and it, you can kind of hit the ending. They, they gave just gave us exactly what we asked. Yeah, exactly. They gave you exactly what you asked for. I will admit there is math issues. Like that's I think one of the big things that usually haunts for E is that the math was really bad in some aspects. Things got a little tanky, but it was also a completely different system. It, it admittedly was a very different game than I think anybody was anticipating it to be. <laughs> like, I, I think it... I think people wanted it to be a few different things, and it just wasn't. And when pe people realize it wasn't, uh, when people realized it was exactly what they wanted, it was it, it it angered them. This isn't this isn't what I want. This is this is everything I wanted, and I hate it. Kind of thing. I think that's the part that also annoyed people more than anything. Hopefully I'm coming in all right as well. Okay, let me adjust my mic. Yeah, it's like I I don't need a fucking we don't we don't need to fight the you know, the Omega Murder Dragon. That's not really our uh, our prerogative, really. This is like yeah. Oh, it's it's doing the fun thing where it's calling nodding differently in five different things. Okay, so in battle, in battle it is expressed by dividing characters into two camps: ally and enemy. When viewed from the PC side, ally refers to each PC and enemy refers to each NPC. On the other hand, when viewed by the NPC side, ally refers to the NPC. <laughs> Thank you, Kiznite. Thank you so much, Kiznite. Very helpful. How far along with this just raw translation? Um, we're pretty good. Like we're we we've been making good fucking. We made really damn good progress last last uh the last episode i guess you'd call it at this point like the main the main thing that this really does boil down to is sometimes the terms get a little bit wonky yeah okay Two types of enemies who refer to evil spirits to can manipulate the possession chain, and that is chain smokers. I believe they're called chain messengers. Not chain smokers, because this is the same... Wait. Yeah, this is the same term. So this is supposed to be a chain messenger, because if we break down this particular word, chain smiths, Okay, what is what is this chain? Okay. What is this? Use. Okay. What if I do this? Should no. Okay, so let's try I need a better term for these particular people, Japanese, because like chain messengers, I believe chain users is what they're, 
like kind of saying chain, you know, chains, and then per, then it's like a user. Because if I do this, this should say like use. And if I do this, st st it means stomach, I guess. So a full one would be like chain. It would be chain user, chain messenger, chain smith. I think the entire idea is that these are people who manipulate. Uh, the devs of 60, the OSR game, must be having a stroke. Yeah, they're having a stroke right now. Uh, let's see, these translation apps have an obsession with nodding. Yeah, again, it's it's one of those things where I think I'm I'm I've been keeping them with uh, where okay, I've been keeping them with the term of not chain smokers or anything, but I've been keeping them with chain messenger right now that's what i've been referring to them as this is kind of the um the big thing here is that like this is the the, the raw you could say like this is just going to be my raw thing and because what i have to do after this after i'm done with this particular aspect of it i get to convert it all into another document and that document is going to be me Pretty much like instead of having like here's the translation bit and like here's this it's going to be just this aspect kind of just formatted in a different way and me changing some of the wording in with me making like obvious references to be like yeah it's not going to be I sorry everyone it's not going to be nodding anymore like I, it's it's not going to be you know, yeah, the, the, you know, the, the, it's not going to be nodding. I'm probably going to do binding techniques and like, or it's a binding, uh, because that's a lot easier. And it's literally going to be just me having to go in there and double check everything. Oh, Jesus. Uh, none of the translation, none, none of the translators are going to have a fucking good time with this. Fun fact. They are all going to have a shit fit. I'm gonna not. You don't understand. I'm literally nodding. I'm going to. Check the separation of possession and the possession chain. Separation of possession chains, okay. Because yeah, this has like a lot of different odder, stranger references. Yeah, because yeah, it gives you the option to translate in Google, but I've been just using Yandex for this because Yandex is probably one of the better ones. It's going to have a shit fit. Oh, Jesus. Good start, everybody. Good start. Uh, Twin Souls by cutting off uh, will cause the cutting off of the bonding thread, but the chain used in Captain may also shred the possession chain due to the, due to the Twin Souls bonding technique. This is called possession chain breakage. The state of which possession chain is cut off during battle is called the cut off state. Losses of mobs are determined by data whether they are living or dead. The characters of the living become detached when they enter a square of the shore. The character of the dead enters a square of the other when he uh, of the other shore, he or she becomes detached. Once the character has entered the separated state, he cannot participate in the battle. The living will enter the Little will never enter the Shigen square. Likewise, this will never move into squares of the other shore. If such a move occurs, it will be cancelled and never happen. Uh, if the boss or mob's action decision chart effects are all rendered unusable, the duration of the battle due to this uh, Twin Souls binding. Uh, twin Souls nodding. The boss or mob will be immediately placed in a disconnected state.
So... I believe the idea is that you are, you know, as the twin souls, you've kind of formed, you know, a willing bond. You know, you're this is kind of a willing bond, but like the chain user and, you know, plot, you know, the chain user has an unwilling bond. You know, either kind of going back and forth in that regard. It's a, so it's like, oh no, we need to stop, you know, it's like, we need to stop the captive soul, you know, we need to stop the chain user from doing bad thing doing bad things with the captive soul it's kind of like that i think that's what they're trying to do and like you have to break the chain you have to break the the possession chain binding the two together other people helping with this no it's literally just me that's all <laughs> It has been quite literally just me and occasionally asking people like Cole to uh, like translate an odd an odd word out usually. Like there was a we I was having a hell of a time with uh shore and other shore because it was it was translating it to like it was translating it to like place other place and then I'm like this doesn't feel right so I kept going back and forth. I mean, nothing's gonna stop you from doing it. You know, become the become the OSR man because I want you all to remember that people are gonna start calling Five E content OSR. But man, I love I love the future. I I love it. I love it. I love it, gamers. I I want off the ride. I want off the ride, Mister Mister Fucking Mister Yamaguchi. I want off the ride. Because it's like it's it's technically like OSR because it's part of a it's part of the old old edition of D and D. I'm like shut the f shut the fuck shut the fuck up shut up. Uh, let's see. By making we do this battle and kids and the PCs win by turning all participant states into the disengaged state. One of the PCs becomes disconnected, the PCs will lose battle. However, PCs become dis now they can use kick on once to make disconnected state disappear. Because yeah, before I, I, I kind of started, there's another section in here which is the kick on state. This kick on is like your it, it, that's your that's your uh, safety mechanic. Which is like, if case you in case you lose, you still have the ability to say, uh, Lamau, no. Okay, so next we need to go here. We need to go to my desktop. We need to hit the Kiznite button. Click here. We need to go to Yandex, Yandex OCR. Not Chinese. Japanese. Uh, let's see. He's returning the opponent to the original world, letting him lose his power. Ishi, if dead person, move to the trout of Higen and let it drop out. The enemy dead go to the square of Equinox. The enemy's living person go to the trout of the North Shore. Uh, let's see. Uh, without losing powerful active, not. Enemy else tries to PC lose and lose their power. Let's approach without losing and activate a powerful nodding and aim for victory. Don't worry, partner. Let, we can do it together. We just have to activate our nodding. Come on. Don't you wanna don't you wanna knot with me? God, I love I love everything. It's great. So let's see if we do this correctly. Uh, da, da, da. I'm not responding to any questions right now because I can't see them. 
currently going around. It's interesting too of what they use to represent the enemy because if you kind of see here, they're using a Shinto priest to represent it. That's again, that's kind of telling me like, it's giving me a little bit of an implication that they're kind of saying like, yeah, this is kind of an unnatural thing. It's like someone is binding a ghost to their service. Because they're a weird, scary shaman man who wants to kill everybody or something. If the enemy, if the enemy, so we need to do this. We need to go to courier. And then I end up getting the thing called. Like, I've already come to the, like, expectation that I'm going to have to, like, rewrite these charts. Like, every single chart I'm going to have to, like, rewrite to make sure they make... Yeah, so uh, move to it move to this shore, which I feel isn't correct, but that's like what they say is correct. Uh, if the enemy is living, to other other shore. Uh, well, losing and activate a powerful, a powerful knotting, knotting, knotting to win. Yeah, these aren't direct translations, but I don't believe this is entirely correct. But we'll use this as kind of like an example be like yeah I'm gonna have to like rewrite like I've already kind of accepted my lot in life when it comes to I'm going to have to literally rewrite entire sections of this game when it comes to like not not rewrite sections but like re redo like a lot of the graphics I've always I've already kind of come to uh, accept my lot in life with that aspect just because I have to Make no, 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 no. Do not make a furry hang. No. Yeah, picture when I first saw it, I'm like, nodding sounds incorrect, but I guess that we're going with. Again, I think it's by I think it's like binding. I'm like 99% sure it's binding. However, I can't like. Let's see. Fun fact, Google Docs is having a stroke now because I'm on, I'm using, oh, geez, no, come on, come on, come on, darling, come on. There we go, we gotta do that, then we select you, select you, hit fix position on page. Remember, always fix position on page. Uh, don't do anything, oh my god, please stop being such a Fuck up. I hate everything. Because <sighs> what happens a lot of the times with Google Docs, fun fact, is that it doesn't actually treat, the vast majority of the time, it does not treat an image as an independent entity. It treats it as a line of text. So if you don't, usually if you fix position on page, what it does is says, this is just where it is, so I don't want to move it anymore. 
but sometimes it'll literally get caught in itself and it will attempt to try to fucking do things it's not supposed to and it's annoying as all shit incredibly frustrating um let me double check this Set this to three. Battle. Okay, now we get to do... This is... Welcome to the grind section, otherwise known as... Uh, double checking to make sure everything is correct. Hit this button again and again and again. Uh, can I do a little bit of fooling? A little bit of, as they say, fooly coolly. Yeah, sometimes if you literally insert something after, you insert a space. I don't know why. I think it has to do something with the Japanese lettering. Like because it's in Japanese, it is having a little little pee pee poo poo shit fit. Battle is basically done in the battle part. Wow, thanks, game. Battle uh, combat is basically conducting the battle portion of the session. The GM should declare the start of the GM declares the start of the battle. The battle begins at the start of the battle. The GM places the boss model participating in the battle square. Where's the spirit point chart? Places it to a specific scenario does not specify placement. The GM will place them in any square. GM will disclose all data of the boss models participating to the beat to the PLs. It's very odd to me, and I've never read Princess Wing, because this is this author's part, uh, like, his other, his other game is called Princess Wing, which is a mech game, sort of. It's sort of a mech game, but it's also totally not a mech game at the same time. Like, a magical girl mech game? It's very strange. Like, this is a... Uh... Like, this is Princess Wing. Like, it's a very interesting... Like, someone from the JTRPG server is actually, like, wanting to go in here and, like, do that entire thing. Like, that's what they want to do, is is translate the whole thing. Uh, and I'm like, cool, you can do that. Have fun. You, you do... You do you... Yeah, like, I haven't really found much on it, but this is the guy, this is the, by the same author who's done this one. The The brand new supplement for this particular game has come out actually relatively recently and won an award, I think. Uh, that's what he was kind of implying anyway, uh, because I follow the author on Twitter. He's a cool, he's an interesting dude. He knows a lot of people as well. Wouldn't make a wild guess, and this is a PC turn, PC turn, yeah. Holy shit, I'm a fu I'm a fucking prophet. Uh, let's see. PCs take turns to end order with the PCs, up to them. PL should discuss what the GM decides the order will be taken in turns, the order of the PCs, so let's do... Or from the previous one. So let's just, we have to take, let's take this in parts. We do this. And then the next section, we delete this. When it is the PC's turn, he, he slash she may just perform a normal movement and activation of the... Fun fact, I actually... 
slightly, you know, nicked my wrist on something today, and it's kind of very annoying. I think I just scratched it or something. It's, ugh, it's so awkward. I should have a band-aid for it, but I don't know where. Uh, you may use you not to, let's see. And activation of the nodding technique in turn. Basically, the order of these two acts cannot be interchanged. With normal move, you can move your up or down one square. You may choose not to move at this time. Activate ligature. Uh, activate ligature. Let's see, did you... This is just this one, right? Okay, so the, the first two paragraphs are fine. Does it activate ligature? Uh, in nodding activation, you choose one of the nodding your PC used and used at this time. Perform a yarn determination. Forms a yarn determination. It makes a threading decision. It makes a. We do this. It's a yarn determination, but instead we use threading decision. Because the threading decision means you have to make the roll, which the roll is sometimes a little bit weird. I only poo poo farted for the good of humanity. Two, two three, bosses turn. Okay. Yeah, this was a little bit messy, but we got there in the end. Uh, we use the index and we use the index and L, which reminds me I need to set this to heading fucking four. I'm usually I'm 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 usually not terribly autistic when it comes to headings, but I want to be really precise with this, just because there's a lot to consider. <laughs> Let's see here we got two more. We're going to do this. You select you down here. You're going to be the boss turn. I know you. This is, yeah, this is boss turn. I'm the boss of. I'm the boss of this gym. Boss will do the turn. Boss with multiple bosses. Shake the dice to decide who the action in order. Shake one d six. If an odd number comes up, boss A over GM may decide. Uh, boss has ushered in the turn will actually refer to action decision table set by the boss data. Shake 1d6 and process the effect after it moves to the mob turn. Okay, so... I'm the boss of this gym. Uh yeah. Wrestling. I need to get Gachimuchi Nirvana Seekers up and running. That's what I should do. I'm the boss of this gym. But you can't tell, it's one o'clock in the morning and my fatigue is hitting. No, God, no. Oh. Oopsie doopsie. Oh no. I made a boo boo. Ha ha. Oh no. Mushy mushy. Oopsie doopsie. Oh no. Run the turn in a battle with multiple mobs. Shake the dice to determine who acts first. Multiple mobs. The order to randomly turn by rolling a die. For example, if the roll is 1d6, roll 1d6. Uh, da, 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 da. May determine own description if n no mobs will, or if all mobs play for disengage and skip this step. By referring to the action decision chart. Cool. Which reminds me, I'm going to have to do all the action decision charts. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is going to be one of those ones. Okay. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Hot loads. Uh, let me do this.
Step five, continuation of the battle. Again, next. Because we actually know how to play the game. Like, that's the big thing. It's like, we know how to play the game. Because this is this phase done. If we go back one. Now we just have to worry about this particular section. Which is a completely different bit. If I do that, it's not going to be heading one. It's going to be heading two. We set you like this. Utama Spirit Decor. I'm going to call it the Utama. I don't really know what that means, but I'm kind of working with it. Yandex. Yandex. Yandecarino. Uh, the Not Soul Kick On is the act of retying a bond thread. Kick on is the act of which two souls who bonding thread who's bonding thread. Actually, wait a second. Okay, so this would be the not soul kick on. Retying a bond through that squeezing the last power from the twin souls become a detached state. I think I get the idea of what this is. I understand what they're actually trying to say here. I believe the wording is a little bit awkward though. And it's like, I don't know if it's just worded poorly or the translation just doesn't feel like fucking working. But I, cause if I consult this. Because I need to set this to heading three. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to go here. We're going to go deep out. We're going to hit that price of United Soul. Price of the soul. Let's see, are you gonna, you're gonna pee pee poo poo? Yeah, you're gonna pee pee poo poo. By performing the Yukion, the bonding thread becomes even stronger. Twin souls gain more power. However, the heavy price to pay for Yukion. Let the not the mind never become separate. The not will be left with one. Okay. So it's pretty much you can do it once. And you can't really like bring the character out for different characters. You can't bind with bond with anybody else. It's like, yeah, you're kind of. You're a little bit fucky wucky in a, in a very technical term. So you're like, yep, this is it. This is your la This is your last gasp. Have fun, asshole. One last night at the opera, Utama Rule. Deep L usually does translations. Uh, Kids Night, PCs become disconnected. He should make declare use of Yuki on, who declares the Yui Kodikor. Can you use any Yui Kodikor from the Yui Kodikor your list below? Apply its effect. Uh, Yukuronin cannot be interfered by any Yoku Jutsu effect or any effect of the enemy. If the two souls have the Yui Soul. Let's check the Yui Soul box on each other's character sheet. Write the other name. It. Write the other's name. The PC with the Yuki on column in his or her character sheet. Roll one d six. Determine. I'm. Mean, if the roll is one to three, the knot will remain living. The knot will remain with the dead. Knot will never reveal tie a knot with anyone again. The character sheet cannot be used to set. Cannot be used in a session in the future. Okay. So this is kind of the idea, like, you're you're out of the game, effectively. Like, sorry, sorry, asshole. You're, you're gone. Like, there's a potential that you're going to lose a character. Oh, nose. Oh, nose. I guess that's appropriate in the game about fucking dying. I mean, uh, mm. Oh, 
oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Nope, to select you. List of Utama. Let's see. How do we do that? May not become the, uh, the PC that has become disconnected and uh, immediately move five squares. Disconnect this day, immediately move one square, then PC. The PC moves another PC the same square as the PC. So what that effectively means is that you can, you barely move up, but you get to activate your superpower right the fucking now. Disengage stay, PC is now dis disengaged. Moves three squares after that. Zero to one and 13 to 14 are changed to Singularity Yoriba. Activate. So it's more of the, if you do a main knot, that means you're, if you're in the main knot, that means it's more of like, this is just immediately a safe one. While it not being that way. I believe the singularity Ryuba means that you can't enter or exit it. Like you're stuck in it kind of thing. Which we can do. Yep, yeah, that's this that is this entire section. It's not a very long section. Uh which brings me to These are just reference charts, aren't they? Rough rule explanation. Yeah, these are just the rough rules. Okay, cool. We are done with this particular section. What's this section? World part. How long is the world part? Let's... Oh, mother of... Oh, mother of... Oh, sweet Jesus, mother... Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh. I wonder if these are really important. I, I, honest to God, I wonder if this is really important. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to put it in here anyway. Just as a... We'll do a quick look. Because, let's see, we need to exit there, exit there. This is going to be worldview setting. List of organizations. Yeah, I think this is just all lore. Because if we do, let's just do a quick brief overview of the lore, shall we? Shall we, boys? Rattle them, boys. Rattle, rattle, rattle. <laughs> like, half of me is like, do I just do, like, just a raw fucking translation? Like, do not, not a single fuck given kind of thing. Like, just as much as possible, as fast as possible, and just adjust this. Uh, let's do... What is this? World of Kizanite. Let's do a quick, just... Let, let's just open this up. Basically, not a different world, but some respects are secretly and significantly different. Oh, this is literally just <laughs> who's ready for the lore section. Okay, let's just do see more. 
uh, soul this shore and the other shore. Uh, the soul clearly exists, soul is a source of life in general, the living cannot perceive existence of the soul, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Jesus Christ almighty. Look how much there is. It's all lore stuff. It's all fucking lore information. Oh my God, it's the lore section. Ah! Can I get away with this? <laughs> you know what? Let's... Let's see. Let's. We need to set this to three. So this is the world view setting. We need to set it here. World of Kiznite. Oh, no. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, this is actually going to be pretty simple. You want to know why it's going to be very, pretty simple? Because I can just, I'm just going to do this. Like, that is, this is the plan. Like, th there's going to be no elegance to this translation bit. There's going to be no hopes and dreams. Anything of even vaguely, vaguely quality assurance. There is none. This is lore shit. So if we can kind of, off, oh, I'm not going to say we can speed run it, but we can kind of speed run it. Uh, and the... Let's see, however, however, uh, dead, twin souls and chain of can perceive them, souls, basically, da 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 da, da. appearance of the flame depends on the state of the owner, for example, the flame of the living is dying, so it may look small. Oh my god. On... Oh no, oh no. I believe this is should be shore and other shore. If we just take the entire bit here, we paste it in here. And then we this. We select everything here. Okay, yeah, you can tell I am not really in this section. No harm against this guy. I bet his lore is very interesting. It's just like, yep, here it is. You like lore, and it's fucking lore. Yes. This does not make my life easier, is what I'm trying to say here. And, like, non human souls. Because, yeah, he's going over all the things that, like, this is important to, like, my setting. 
No. Jesus fucking crap. Oh, go away. Back to you. We hit the 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 the. That's why I'm I'm kind of going a little bit fast on this section just because it's like not super important. Well, it's like it's it's important, but not like critical to to the game itself and that's really what i'm like i believe this means win soul the tama win soul win soul twin soul Hell on this one. This is going to be one of those moments where I can like actually after this particular, after I am done with. I'm pretty much going to have to do like here's a basic fucking lore summary like in case you care <laughs> here's what it is in case you don't care don't worry about it talking about off state Again, he has to explain his story. He has to explain the lore of his world, which is very important. I'm not gonna lie. Like, yeah, cool. This is really, this is really important. Like, you obviously care about this, brother. But it's like, holy, sh holy, holy shit. <laughs> Because this is what we like to call uh, justifying. Justifying lore, justifying game mechanics. Heaven or heaven or hell. They could not see their faults. So they unleashed the beast. Project Melody feet picks. See, I never actually see Project Melody anymore. Like she never pops up. Oh. Nah, uh, you know, I watch almost all these streams, I still don't fully understand the rules. It's Shaman King. Um, pretty much the rules, very simply put, is you're on a board, you're trying to move each other off the board. And you're gonna be making doing nodding techniques or binding techniques to do that. And the majority of the time, what you're going to do is you're going to take 2d6, and you need to get within a range of actually how far you are to actually perform it. So this means that, like, if you're very far apart from one another, it gets a lot harder. It gets a lot harder to do things. It actually becomes a lot more difficult to, like, succeed at some of those checks to move the opponent. But if you actually get together... You can do it, but you're getting, it's a lot easier. It's easier in some respects and harder in others. Yeah, it's, 
literally just a 2d6. It's just a standard Japanese 2d6 game. Yeah, like, Melody was, like, the thing there for a while, and then Melody kind of went away. Like, oh, bye, Melody. Like, he here's my thing. Like, th this is controversial opinion from your boy Notepad and on at 1 a.m. <laughs> uh, like, anytime she was on, like, the chatterbait thing, I'm like, that is cringy as fuck, bruh. That's cringe. Like, holy shit, that's just weird because her model looked weird. It was. It, 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 her voice. God, I hate her voice so fucking much. Hey, everybody, look at me, a Project Melly. I'm like, shut up. Holy fuck. Oh my god. And apparently, she's completely different, like, off camera. That was the thing that really kind of was like, oh, I understand now. Because, fun fact, my friend actually met her. My friend met her in VR chat. And apparently she's, like, very quiet. And she just hangs around her boyfriend all the time. Because, yeah, she has a fucking... She had a boy... She has a boyfriend. GFE, my, my, my men, my boys. Because she got her 2D model. Because, like... She got this, like, the 2D model here, which, this just looked weird to me, either way. Like, this just kind of looked odd to me. Like, I think the word would be, like, over-designed would be a good way of saying it. Because you got the stupid fucking half-jacket. I've actually been trying to figure out what the fuck those things are called. The best term I have is just half-jacket. And then there's, like, a weird, like fucking swimsuit under it and then you have the mini skirt like holy shit woman put on a like i put i don't know put on a shirt or something i like what what do you like what do you what do you do neander's is hilarious uh mostly because she just fucking exploded and everything everything she touches now is on fire uh, I find that hilarious. Uh, <laughs> Pip has been on a roll lately, though. I will say that. Yeah, Pip has been on a pretty solid roll over the past few... After the past while. But she she hasn't been able to do as much because she got she had to had to get her fucking like tooth pulled. It was like damn, f damn rabbit, what the fuck? See, I put in my I put in my thing to get interviewed by Pippa. Pippa never responded, and I felt really sad. Pour one out for the homies, boys. <laughs> All I'm saying, all, all I'm saying, Pippa, if you want to interview 1AM Notepad and man who writes games, I'm your man. I am your, your dude. Fatigue is hitting here, by the way. What was the other ones in V-Show? I don't like V-Shoujo very much, though. I'm like... Every time I see something on V Shoujo, it's never positive. You always gotta remember, it's never a positive thing anytime I see something with V Shoujo. And this is, go this is going to be my other controversial opinion. Because it's almost 2 o'clock in the... You know. Apparently she didn't brush her teeth for 7 years. How the fuck do you not brush your teeth for 7 years? Like, I'm not going to say I have the healthiest teeth in the world. Like, I'm not I'm not saying that I do. Like, I've had a lot of teeth ish tooth issues. But like, I brush my teeth every night. But like, oh, I oh, sorry. I don't I'm not doing that. like why are you stupid? Like, you, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
you are an adult. <laughs> See, it's the it's weird because like this is gonna be my, like I like Iron Mouse. That was the one. Iron Mouse. I don't like Iron Mouse. <laughs> I bet she's a lovely person if you actually talk to her. But I popped in in one stream, I'm like, what's the big deal with Iron Mouse? I gotta learn about sad, sad sick girl who is sad. I'm ready to go. Let's learn more about the sad sick girl. Oh my god, I had, like... How do people listen to that voice? Oh, Jesus. Mother, my, my, my mother, mother of Mary. Like, that was fucking painful. And, like, I'm like, damn. Like, we get it. You're trying to be cute. Like, holy shit, woman. Spe like, and it's like, are, is this your, like, real voice? That was, like, my thing. Like, like, is this your real voice? Or are you doing a bit? I don't know with, with her. I don't know. Our neat phase. They didn't leave a room for a year neat. Yeah, I can see that. Pippa's talked about stuff like that. I think that's one of the reasons why she's known as the fucking Yab Rabbit. And why fucking VT loves her so much. Is because she is controversial enough and she can say things. And, every, and the thing is, every single thing she does, she can immediately deflect back on being a neat. Or, or has been a neat at one point. And again, my my this is my big thing with some of the with some of these people. I would love to just like have a coffee with them. Just like sit down in a cafe and just have a coffee with them. Be like, are you this person like twenty four seven, or are you, or are you actually just a very normal person? That's what I would do. Again, even in like VR chat, I'd love just to like sit down with like Melody and just talk like human beings. Just as actually like talk, none of this other bullshit. Like not 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 with the cameras off. That's the big thing with the cameras off. God, speaking about BT, I'm tired. I could do whatever I want. See, this is what I've been obsessed over recently. This is VTWG. This is VTWPBG. This is a uh, VTuber world building. This is a fascinating project for anyone who's like just curious about writing and things. This is a fascinating thing to witness. And I've been kind of not not necessarily oh jeez, can't post that. I've been not really like going too hard on it. Like I've read some bits and pieces. Like the writing fluctuates heavily. Cuz I think there's quite a few ESLs in it. And <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting because they're literally world building. That's the big thing. They are world building this entire fucking setting. Let me see if I can bring up the um someone on TG was asking for help on a VTRPG. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean I I popped in here. <laughs> Since it's just you, McDrusel, don't worry. We're an hour and thirty. Thing is, we're an hour and thirty in, so no one's gonna be here at this hour. Let me. No, that's the books and such. We don't need that. Uh, games and such. No, that's the wrong one too. Weekend Warrior. <laughs> I drafted this up actually. Uh. This was quite literally born from my my rampant curiosity on it. Because I remember someone talking about it on TG. So I popped in and saw what I could do and just did some... This did a quick draft of things. Currently, there's three options. Uh, people seem to lean more towards C and A with one person... Probably one of the most competent people in there, with like mechanically speaking, leaning toward B. So it's... A little bit tempting, like each of them have their own benefits and drawbacks. Uh, generally speaking, option C is the easiest as it's just a 2D6 game. 
option A is a dice stacking game, while option B is effectively budget World of Darkness, hence why we have uh, my former Oshi before she did Lee and uh, Mori. Uh, don't trust anyone on Lean, kids. It's whack. Yeah, so... Yeah, you kind of see all my notes here. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about expanding. Just doing like one weekend, just blast through a bunch of shit on it. Just go ham on it. Then, then post it and just post it in there, being like, "I did a stream on you guys. Fuck you. How y'all doing? <laughs> These incidents caused by chain users are called chain incidents. Wow, I'm astounded." Basically, people who've become captives. So no, I hit the wrong thing. You fuck. Those who don't know what's going on, uh, anytime I I drag something in here, it's putting it on the header, uh, and the header pops up on every page, which is uh, very annoying. However, the ch chain master, chain user. There's a couple terms that could be used in this regard. I'm okay with that. We can do this. Because the thing with like the VT world building of it, I have not put myself as no pad on. Oh, oh, oh no. I must hide from the world. I'm just a guy from TG. And it, it's interesting how people naturally progress in writing. You know, what... What people talk about, what people you know, like gravitate toward, all very interesting to me. Oh, you're not gonna work hard. <laughs> Oborozuki by Oborozuki. What the fuck? Does, what? Oborozuki. Okay, it's one of those ones where we gotta... The incident of Nightmare by Twin Souls is the Ourobora Possession Night. One night about 50 years ago, it happened without warning. Suddenly, chain users and Twin Souls were born all over the country at the same time. Chain incident occurred in large numbers. The damage was so great that it took nearly 10 years for the still small uh, Tokomori Shu to finish dealing with the incident to some extent. Twin Souls, the boundary between this shore and other shore, may have been distorted by a powerful chain user to control so many souls. So, yeah, something happened, uh, the, the spooky night happened, and uh, shit got fucked. That's the that's the lore there. Yeah, we are at the home stretch of the lore, everybody. Let's, let's fucking go! Okay. Numerous chain users who cause chain incidents. You cause chain incidents because everything has to be put in fucking brackets for this godforsaken game. Why are there so many brackets? I don't know why. Because when you see the brackets there in like Japanese games, always assume that they're putting it in quotes. That's how it works. He's pretty much putting all this shit in quotes repeatedly. See, the problem is I knew a girl who uh, got hardcore in a lean. Uh, so when it when it even like when she mentioned it, like my opinion of her fucking fell through the goddamn, you know, fell through the literal goddamn floor with zero survivors. Even if it's true or not, 
it's immediately like, well, I don't give a shit. I'm like, no, 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 not dealing with that shit again. Not this shit again. Lean's fucked, bro. Ow. Okay. TG builds a, like TG builds a setting and stuff like that. They can be the thing is like they can be fun. The issue is that a few people will usually come to dominate the thread. And if it's like it, it kind of sh it does shape the nature of the thread very very hard depending on what it is because there was one project I hopped on a, hopped on a little bit because they were asking for help in the amateur homebrew thread. I'm like, all right, you know, I I, I feel you know I'll I'll see what I can do. There's been like no work because like the the the, the Like, the lead dev, like, walked off. He's like, I don't want to do it anymore. So everyone's been kind of just sitting around like, Oh, well, we should do this. Yeah, that seems like fun. Yeah. Cool, let's let's do this. Yeah. Like, do you know, do you know rules? Do you know how to make rules? Do you know how to make rules? It's like, Oh, Jesus, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. The capped soul enclosed airspace often sends obstacles in front of super souls. Twin souls in searching for the chain master. However, the obstacle sometimes leaves one part of the chain to use your trance, the possession chain. Or a fragment. This is also part of the chain to use your soul. Nope. So the entire idea is that you're hunting down the possession chain. All right. So. Battle between the soul and the spirit. I'm continuing the investment and arriving at the Chainsmith's place. Two souls will finally confront the Chainsmith directly. However, naturally, the battle will be completely different from the norm. Uh, battle again, the figure of the living fighting will be unrecognizable to the general public. This is because the battle and the living comes as close as possible to the dead. In battle between souls of power, the outcome is return enemy to the world from which he belongs. His soul, souls of both the twin soul and the chain wielder have crossed, crossed the border of this shore and that shore. And the chain wielder cross the border of this shore and the other shore by a special bond have nature this is like justifying combat so like this is how combat works fun fact okay we did it everybody congratulations we sorted through the world information uh let's 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 see what list of organizations oh oh boy okay there aren't too many my goal is to get uh let's see what what's this one looking like these are just sample npcs so uh no we're not going to do we're not doing the fucking sample npcs we'll do the organizations if only because just like yeah let's just blitz through this shit actually do i really need to Let's 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 think. Like, what's what's this section? What's what are you? This is the GM guide, ain't it? The game mastering part. Do we go through the organization bit? Let's. Yeah. Ah, God. Ugh.
I don't know. Sometimes GM guides have like a shit ton of information you need, and sometimes they don't. Uh, these are just organizations, right? That's all these are. It's just the list of organizations. We don't really, we don't really need the NPC section necessarily. Let's um, let's do a little bit of looking around. Oh, sweet Jesus, mother of God! Uh, what is? What are you actually saying here? Let's. Essential, very important role. It's like, are you speaking of rules or are you speaking of how to like prepare a scenario? To me, those are like, yeah, I'm getting a lot of like, here's how to make a scenario. Here's this, here's this, rule rulings. Session facilitator. Both GM and PL. Play format. Mono play. Campaign play, yeah. Yeah, so it just is. If we select all of you sample boss, sample mock, creating boss, lift the shackles. So here's the, here's the, like, how enemies are actually. These are kind of how enemies are made, like, right here. Because this is going to be the example creating a boss. Boss peer create the following procedures. Okay. So yeah, it looks like they have shackles, you know, becomes that's becomes their action list effectively. So yeah, this is still this is relatively important to actually like kind of go over. Yeah, it it it, it just it, it's it's worthy going over. Because that's where like the N, like the NPC section is, but like let's see what we really have to work on. Scenario part. Download part, okay. So, what we really need to do is literally just kind of the GM section. That's really the last, that's the last major bit of this experience is just the GM part because everything after this is like download, like where to download things, like how to buy things, where to, because, you know, extra part, like what's the, what's the extra part all about? reference work so it's like all the references let, let me let me guess he's referencing uh movies and stuff juju kaisen super smash bros weekend uh soul eater blade to the deep yeah this is all the his fucking references yeah that's fine yeah. I think the basics of what you need to actually play the game are all here. No, I'm not seeing Shaman King anywhere. There's no paid contents yet. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call it there. What we really, what, all we really need to do at this point is do the GM section. Which, the GM section is probably going to get curated down pretty hard, which is literally just going to be like, these are the bare minimum required. Like, here's what enemies look like here, and then do all the chains. That's going to be the big part, is here are all the chains that you need to do particular things. And we could probably do that one, probably like a full translation of all that will be like one more stream, but that's pretty much it. So, um, thank you all for watching. My name is Notepad Anon. Right games for fun usually, but we did a little bit of translation tonight. Uh, I will see you all tomorrow for Zombie Dark 30 again. It's going to be Equipment Autism finally, everybody. Everyone be hopefully, hopefully everyone's happy with Equipment Autism. Uh, which I get to lose my mind with. And I just get to stare at a fucking document for... Prepare to have me stare at a fucking spreadsheet for like three hours. Um, but yeah, we're doing pretty good. 
Life's, life's, life's good. Just don't forget this weekend we are going to be going over a Magical Girl RPGs. Gone over a handful of them. Still kind of in the process of going through them all. I'm going to go through one probably after this stream a little bit. I'll give myself a little bit of a break and then go start going over another one. Uh, so far, it's been a lot of light games. I, I think tonight's gonna be like, let's see what's on my, let's see what's on my docket. Uh, See, like, I need to go over, see, by, here's the thing, by Saturday, I need to go over Disaster Piece, the Madoka game, Sparks, and Magical Burst. So, most likely, let's see, today is Friday, probably tonight, where I'm going to go over Disaster Piece, actually, probably go over uh, Magical Burst, and probably disaster piece tonight and then do sparks and madoka tomorrow maybe i might do sparks tonight i don't know but uh yeah i need to kind of kick my ass into gear a little bit I, i've been a little i've been i've been slacking on it just because things have been kind of going a little bit slow in that regard let's see uh that's chaos autism i on nah I have I, I I like to do usually my things pretty solo, but yeah, Godspeed. Got good luck, you know the rest. Ooh. 